Hello, in this video, we're going to look at the multivariate normal distribution as an approximation to the multinomial distribution. And really, this is at the request of a YouTuber, Nason Mandigo, if I'm pronouncing the name correctly. For it, we'll need three background videos. Uh, BV1 is exponential family multinomial distribution. And there we derive in a unique way the mean, the variance, the covariances for this multinomial distribution that we'll use in this video. Uh, BV2 is the central limit theorem, specifically the univariate central limit theorem. And we also look at the binomial distribution and what it limits to according to the central limit theorem. And BV3, we look at uh, quadratic forms, part two specifically, and that's where the random variable is a, a multinomial distribution, but the covariance matrix is singular. It's a positive semi-definite matrix. So in this video, we're going to let X be multinomial with N of 1 and P, be a vector of parameters. And so X is going to be a K plus 1 by 1 vector, and each of these X's can take on a 0 or 1. But only one of them, like in the binomial case where you get to pick one of two categories, here you get to pick one of k plus one categories. So all of them will be zero except for one. And the p vector is going to, and each of these represents the probability of that specific category. We have one uh, restriction in that, that they sum to one. And again, this is defining the xi's and the probability of a category. Now notice that this xi represents one of these components of our vector. And so the probability of the ith component is pi. And in a sense, this is like a multivariate Bernoulli distribution. And actually that's my words, and so I don't know if it's really considered that, but I think about it like that, meaning that, um, you know, we're taking a sample of size one and um, eat, eat all the components are zero except for one. So let's look at the data matrix. So if we take a sample of size n, do, 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 and then so each column represents a vector, and so they're going to be all zeros except for one component. So all zeros except for one component, all the way through, all zeros except for one component. Here the one is in here somewhere. So each column has exactly one. And these can be thought of as categories, so categories 1 through k plus 1. Now, let's look at the sum of the uh, x vectors, which is essentially taking the row sums. We're going to call that y. And, and it, again, when you add vectors, you add them component-wise, and we're going to generically call it y1 through yk plus 1. Now, it can be shown, easily shown, that Y is a multinomial distribution in P, where N is, you know, the number of vectors that you summed. Um, we're going to let Y bar be the, the mean of these X vectors, okay? And now you, you may think it a little silly to develop it like this, but the Y being a multinomial distribution is actually the sum of these multivariate Bernoulli distribution. And whenever you're adding independent observations, the central limit theorem kicks in. And so we'll use that. And so here, if we look at the mean of the x vectors, so y bar, minus the mean of one of those observations, you know, of course, times n, that limits in distribution to a normal distribution, multivariate normal, mean vector zero, and covariance uh, sigma. Sigma is the variance of one of the x vectors. So that creates a k plus one by k plus one vector. And we know by BV1 that the variance of any one of those components is pi qi, or pi one minus pi. The covariance between any two components, negative pi, pj, and the negative makes sense. Negative means when one is high, the other is low. 
And that makes sense because they both can't be one at the same time. When one is one, the other zero. So they have to be sort of opposite, you know, correlated or negatively correlated. The mean of one of those components is pi, the probability of that component. Now, this implies that the mean of the x vector is the mean of each component, which is pi through p k plus 1, sigma, which is the variance of the x vector, so it creates a variance covariance matrix of this, so the diagonals are the p minus q, or the p minus 1 minus p, p 1 minus p, and then these are all the negative, and it is symmetric. Now, so for large n, right, this mean vector is multivariate normal. So if you subtract, divide this over, divide it in, add this over, x bar. So you, you, and, and in a sense, that doesn't make sense to do that way because you have to have the ends over here to be asymptotically distributed. But then you can say, well, when n is large enough, we, you know, and then we divide everything over there, but the y bar, we can say y bar is approximately normally distributed. But remember that this is, is uh, it's not a, a full rank matrix. So we can't take uh, uh, inverses of it. And you can see that by, if, if, you, you know, the, if you write P K plus one as one minus the sum of the other P's, then this ends up being an exact linear combination of the first K rows. And according to Wikipedia, for large n, you can write the, I'm going to call it a density, but it's not a true density in the normal respect. The, the density can be written like this. And notice that this, usually you'd have sigma inverse here, but sigma is not full rank. So we use the pseudo inverse or the more Penrose inverse. And this is the pseudo um, determinant and a pseudo determinant it, and I haven't covered it and I, and I probably will because it's kind of a neat topic it takes the it's the product of the positive eigenvalues now since sigma is it's a positive semi-definite matrix so all the eigenvalues are zero or positive and this pseudo determinant only takes the product of the positive uh, eigenvalues so Okay, so now um, we're going to prove something for theorem one, and and it wouldn't be a video that we normally do without some sort of theorem and proof. And so we're going to prove that this relationship holds, where this is the pseudo inverse, and this is actually can be this case right here. And then we're going to show that the rank of the uh, pseudo inverse times sigma is k. Now here. Um, in one, it's it's it it's a dull moment because since this is a uh, generalized inverse, then this equals sigma, which is this, and so we're not going to prove it because by the definition of a pseudo inverse, it's true. Now this one, we're going to make use of the rank of the product of a matrix is always less than or equal to the rank you know, the minimum of the individual matrices, okay? And so here, if we look at the rank of sigma, and then we replace, because the, this is a uh, generalized inverse, this is actually equal to that, so the ranks have to be the same. Now, if we look at this matrix times this matrix, the rank of this has to be less than or equal to the minimum of one of those, so we know this is less than this, and then we apply that again, that this is less than this matrix. But since it's a more Penrose inverse, this is actually equal to this. And now we can do the same thing here. Now the rank of this matrix is less, has to be the less than or equal to the minimum of this matrix times this matrix. So we put it in there. And then this has to be the less, rank less than or equal to, say, sigma 
but we know sigma is rank K based upon this matrix. So rank of sigma, rank of sigma is K. That tells me that the rank of this is K. And then we're finished. Okay. So you may be wondering why we're doing that. Well, I want to develop a one minus alpha percent confidence region for our mean vector. And so by theorem one, which is this, and by BV3, this quadratic form goes in distribution to a chi-squared, okay? So a one minus alpha percent confidence region for P, our mean vector, are the vectors P hat that satisfy this region. And so then that creates an ellipsoid for a confidence region for the mean vector, okay? And that's all I'm going to do for today. But it should be noted that there's maybe a more useful way to, to d create confidence intervals and confidence regions by just taking linear combinations of our mean vector, right? Since this limits to a normal distribution, you can actually take linear combinations of this to create like a confidence interval for the ith category or the difference of two categories. And that may be a better approach. But that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.